Abby, how are you tonight? Um, I always seem to get the biggest crowds when I present my budget, which I kind of like. I don't feel so by myself up here. So I just, go ahead, Greg, you can the next one. Um, we, every year, talk about all the programs we have at Henrik Hudson. We talk about our sports, how many kids we have in them. And I'm really proud to say that our special ed programs keep our kids in district. Um, we have so many, so many programs that a lot of schools can't afford to have or just don't have the students to have uh, the full programs. We can go anywhere from having basic related services to consultant teachers to special classes. Um, we are so fortunate that over the years the board has been allowing us as a department to work with our K-5 teachers and make programs that fit students. We, when I entered the district, um, everybody said to me, we don't have programs for our kids. There's two ways they can have you serviced. They can be serviced in ICT, or they can be in an ABC class. And if they don't fit in either one, we make them fit. So we made some major changes over the last few years. We're actually getting ready to meet next, next month to uh, discuss K-5 to again. So I think, you know, these are the, the multi-programs we have. I'm not gonna read them all. I think the ones, that are so important this year to touch on is our sales six. So we started with um, kids that transitioned from the fifth grade up to the middle school who are really struggling. We're giving them double art and double, um, double art, double reading and writing and double math periods, which has really seen some growth. So I've been meeting with teachers every five weeks talking about data I started K-5 and just to see the growth that we're seeing. We're adding the seventh grade next year. So it'll be a six, seven class. It'll look a little bit different, but it'll still be a home base. Um, the other thing that's just amazing for us is our work-based learning program. It's here at the high school. If you've been by the captain's quarters, it looks much different than it has in the past. Our kids are running the IT department, um, helping Vanitha do some IT stuff. They're out in the community. They work in my office. They work in Frank G in the morning sometimes before students get there. They're at the Buchanan um, Pantry. They're at Old Navy now. Our kids work at Old Navy. Um, they are starting their own coffee shop. It's called the coffee cart, you know, so the kids are going to work on some hours during the day. They'll start from how to budget, marketing, et cetera, for donations. So these are amazing experiences that most districts aren't doing. SEPTA just started this in Lakeland about two weeks ago, so it's exciting. So we're on the same page as Lakeland. So these are great programs that we've been allowed to offer our students here at Hendrick Hudson. Each year, we always talk about numbers. We don't ever really share what's really happening in the classroom. And I'm not going to read these to you, but these are just stories that the teachers share with you as you walk through and talking about how we're creating mindfulness, not just for our kids, but for our teachers after school if they want to be there. We're talking about how we have sensory equipment being used by all students. So now every building has a sensory space. Every sensory space, guess what, looks the same for the grade level that's there. So everybody has access to that. Um, the ICT teachers this year, K to five, actually middle, all the way up through high school, have been trained in PAF, which is a reading program. Uh, it's prevention of failure. It's a reading writing program. Our special ed teachers have been doing tons of reading training. The SRA, which is yes, maybe back when we were in school, SRA was there, but it's been revamped. It's really working with a lot of our students. Um, in the middle school, they're talking about how they're moving kids out of special ed classes, the most restrictive classes, into less restrictive classes. Um, after school clubs with students and teachers. Um, our TAs, how they have really been able to support the students. The high school has really taken on, you go ahead, Greg. The high school has really taken on, we have a lot of school avoidance students. We're seeing more and more every day. Um, how are we working as a team within the high school? And it's been amazing to see what the teachers have to stay, say and share. Their transition again into less restrictive environments. We're doing some real math classes for our students with disabilities. How do you budget? How do you do this? And all those bullets are there. So we're seeing all of this go into play and the teachers are so proud of their work. And we're proud of them for all the stuff that they want to do. A lot of this stuff is new, but it's new in, effect, in the fact that we have a curriculum it's not just fly by the seat of your pants. So they did a lot of research and we bought the curriculum. They trained in the curriculum and they're making gains with our students. So let's get into the numbers that everybody loves to hear about. Head grade, <clears throat> excuse me. So um, to continue, oh, did you skip on grade? Okay, so really when we talk about when we get to the number of numbers, we're talking about our initiatives. 
Uh, Let's Get Ready is our K-1 program that we started after COVID because we know we just we had a lot of dysregulated students that were not able to access the curriculum because they didn't have all that early intervention. Uh, we moved that up to four or five and we've seen a lot of growth. I actually met with one of the teachers today that talked to me about the data. Um, the work-based learning transition coach for transition piece, that means getting them into um, a college, a job, maybe a BOCES program after school, um, or transitioning into a work-based learning program for some of our um, ABC students. Uh, she also helps get our OPWDD, which is a service that students get with um, developmental disabilities. They get that after high school and access VR. Um, with that, we need to continue developing our job sites, but we have so many now, it's awesome. Uh, we're adding a chauffeur to our budget because we are taking a chauffeur, we are taking our custodians hold, hold two roles. So if we have our own chauffeur that's aligned to our budget, that is aligned with our work-based learning and community-based instruction, CBI, that allows all of our students to access the community. We're looking at and talking about revamping academy to add special education supports. Um, and we want to continue to build upon our specialized reading and writing programs. Um, we now, we are still seeing needs of the pandemic coming out of the pandemic and to address um, current students. We had a data meeting this morning and we have five students who are just not moving. What do we need to do? We need to do a little bit more in-depth stuff. And Margaret and I had a great conversation about um, our different types of learners and how do we get there? Because that's an important piece to all of us. All right, Greg. So uh, as I said at the beginning, we're very fortunate to keep our own kids in. I think when I started, we had about 35 students out of district. Right now, an average out of district placement, if you were to go to VOCES, is about $110,000. So we had about 32 kids out. Um, we have no residential at this point, but a residential student can be about $200,000 a year. So right now, BOCES is about the same. We're keeping eight out, we have eight out, but that doesn't mean they can't come back. We'll have our annual reviews, but I'm anticipating eight for next year. Private day school could be your Clearview. Um, it could also be um, WAC West District Exceptional Children up in North Salem. Um, it could be your Hawthorne Country Day School. So those are the types of schools are your private day. We have seven students there currently, no residential, so we have 15 students out. That's as of right now. That does not mean something doesn't change, somebody doesn't move in. That all changes as school gets, so you always budget a little bit more for that. So these are our numbers as of now. Um, and again, please note that the 155 is not it's not including our CPSE students. Um, and it was, we talked on numerous occasions as a board, that number just continues to rise. The number, I think we probably get an average two to three referrals a day. Um, and that's what we're seeing is an average of two to three a day. Uh, whether it's a speech, whether it's an OT, or maybe it needs a, a student needs a full day program. Those are happening every day. And the problem is there's nothing out there for these students. The programs are full, there's no more service providers. So we go high, low, in between, we bargain, can you come in and you can see two kids at once. So we're really trying to figure this out. We belong to the Westchester CPSE group. Uh, Mrs. Gargiulo who's sitting in the office, audience, she attends those meetings and it's the same story around the county. So we all try to get together and say, should we have a group where we can meet in Peekskill or can we meet here? So it's really beginning to think outside of the box like we are in schools. Six to eight, um, we have 79 students anticipated right now, nine to 12, 102 for a total of 336 without our CPSE students. So our enrollment, as you can see, the difference is about two students. That's two students as of 120. That doesn't mean in June, I'm not gonna have another 20 kids or 20 less. We don't know how many are going to move in. As we know, well, as you may or may not know, we had to increase our second grade section this year because the number of second graders that moved in. And we have three sections of fifth grade where last year we had two. So it really depends on the numbers. It depends on how many families move in and if they have children with disabilities. Um, the next slide um, is our budget summary of two years. So as you can see, the biggest um, increase is with our teachers. I've asked for two teachers, one at the high school if we go to the academy, and one at the elementary school based on the number of CPSE students. That does not mean 
that we will utilize those staff members, it means that I need to budget them just in case. Um, we could have no students come in in kindergarten that are classified and only need related services. That could happen. But we have to be prepared in case we do need to add a teacher. I don't want to say, Enrique, by the way, I need another whole teacher in another um, benefit package because. So that's why we budget ahead. That's why we have two teachers. Teaching assistants and aides, um, as you can see, that was a big number. It's a big change from last year to this year. Um, and I will tell you that you have all received an email. Um, after I did a deep dive with Enrique when he returned on Monday, um, 23 people were incorrectly labeled. And they were la labeled um, my people. So at that point, I think at one point, Enrique, you had like a 48% increase there, mm -hmm. um, which is not accurate. Again, this is when kids move in, we have to give them the aids if it comes with them on their IEPs. We up the section of second grade, we up the section of fifth grade. So when you up a section, you gotta have a teaching assistant with it. If you, up, if you have to up a self-contained class, you need a teaching assistant. It could be an aide. It doesn't always have to be a teaching assistant. So that's where that number comes from. Um, we dropped in equipment. We've basically gotten most of our classrooms fitted with flexible seating and anything they need. I always have to have money in reserve for um, my PTs and OTs. If they need a specialized equipment, if I have a student come in and they need a special standard or special seating, we need to have that money readily available. So that's why we went down. Um, there's no increase in materials and supplies, contractuals, um, hospital tutoring. We've had a, a, quite an increase this year in hospital tutoring. So we do pay, we pay the educational piece of that. What that looks like is they contract with an educational consultant that goes into the hospital and teaches the students. It's a high schooler student, they get two hours. If it's elementary, they get one hour. However, as of July 1st, the regulations change. It's two hours for elementary and three for high school. So we'll see an increase in that number as well. Um, tuition, has an, that tuition line doesn't go up, related services for contractual um, went up 20,000. We have to, again, it's keeping up with what we buy outside, whether it's something from um, a speaker, some professional development, um, that has been huge. We've got to keep our teachers up to date and that's spending money at contract, um, at conferences. Margaret doesn't cover my conferences. I cover my own conferences. Tuitions to other public schools. So we send a student to Yorktown and we send a student to Pleasantville. So, um, that is that money. Private schools, we talked about Clearview. Um, services from BOCES, uh, again, went up, um, 15% and that will also if you look at the asterisk, it's the uh, BOCES, LPN, and RN. So um, I know uh, Jeremy asked some really good questions about the BOCES, RN, and LPN, and why we needed to have them, because we have our own five. Well, I'll give you an example. Last week, we had a nurse out for the whole week due to illness. I had the BOCES nurse, nurse cover her, and then I had a field trip go out. I had to cut, cancel my field trip, because I can't send the LPN on a field trip because of medication that are specific to students and she can't administer them. So typically my RN would go out, the LPN would float. They know all of our kids, they float for the, the five buildings and they can fill in for all of our, um, our absenteeisms. When we came back from COVID, we could not find nurses. I would have to, the building principals would call Johnny or Susie's mom and say, listen, we don't have a nurse today. You can either send Johnny in and monitor from home or you keep Johnny home. And the feedback I got from parents was, what's going on? <laughs> You're right, what's going on? So that's when we came up with a plan that we would bring in the RN and the LPN because they can circulate and help cover when people are out. Not that it's frequent, but we have field trips going out. We also have times that we have to do vision screenings, hearing screenings, and we need someone to service those students. And as we <coughs> recall, I think I was sharing with Jeremy earlier, we had 10 different nurses go through the high school last year, 10. We couldn't keep a nurse last year. So, uh, over the last two years maybe, but the bottom line is these have helped us and kept us out of issues with having kids, um, not able to come to school because we didn't have nurses there. Um, related <coughs> services from BOCES is if we get OTs, PTs, if um, we're, when we're sending kids to BOCES, if they get OT, PT, speech, vision services, hearing services, again, BOCES is a general 3% increase that way. Um, and then transportation is an increase due to our chauffeur. 
So a total increase of 6.8% in, um, in our overall budget. When you go to our revenues on the next page, you're looking at about $2.5 million as revenue. Um, and you're talking about an IDA grant, which is your federal grant. 619 is a very small grant. Those are CPSE kids. That's about 22,000. It pays for what we have to pay through the county and part of our secretary. The 611, which is five to 21, um, these are estimated numbers, so please note that I work with our um, our people for estimated. 614946 most of that goes to salaries and what we're required to pay to um, the out-of-district uh, providers to for our um, public school students and our, pri and our private day. Staff is the high cost that we get. So the year I came, I believe it was, Enrique, that we had, didn't do staff for many years. The, per, um, the person before me wasn't doing staff. We got over a million dollars in staff, and that was great. So now we're all caught up, and we're getting about $150,000 in staff. What that is is a high cost. So if you have a child in your building or in BOCES or somewhere else, and they're, they're more than 65000 I believe is our, our threshold was last year, you would get a percentage of that back. So that's for your CPSE kids and your school-aged children. Tuition is about 1.5. I believe it's more than that, but in, we try to keep it very low in case a kid leaves in the middle of the year. We don't want to say we guarantee that money. And about 200000 for our ICT skills, special class kids that come into the 12s or actually participate in our ICT. So like Mechanico um, and Garrison, and there's one of them, one of the small districts, Haldane, they send us kids that they don't have, they don't have programs, there's not enough students there. So we, we do get a lot of their students that come to us. Our IDA grant, um, the expenses I said, your professional salaries, purchase services, uh, BOCES, we don't take anything out of the CPSE grant for BOCES, the 15,000 for BOCES, uh, services is usually like, um, it could be, a consultant, it could be professional development, anything that deals with special education. All right. Any questions? I'll start, but I have a question. So yes. I love that we've added STEM at the elementary sorry, what? STEM at the elementary level. Is there any thought to putting special ed teachers in those classes because I realize science is part of the curriculum and I, it's just an overwhelming concern that I have <coughs> that when the children go to STEM, they're, it's heavy curriculum that they need to learn, they get standardized testing on it, and they don't have that teacher there. What is the, what is the professional you know, way that we manage uh, science in elementary? So you have two trains of thought. Okay, so when you talk to one building, they've figured it out, they've done what they need to do. Another building is, I need help, I need help. So we've done release time, we've done other things. Um, is there a thought that we'd put a special ed person there? We could put a teaching assistant in there. If we put a teacher in there, then I'm gonna have to ask for two more teachers. Wait, say that. Say that so we could put a teaching assistant in there who can work under the direction of the classroom teacher, of the STEM teacher. They, right? There are TAs in the My te No, oh, I understand sure. that, but when my students go and the special ed students go, okay. a second teaching assistant can go. That's one option. The other option is that you can add two more teachers to cover that. So you're talking 150000 easily just on salaries without benefits <laughs> to add to that. So you have two options. You know, we, we have made, I think, CADA 2, they have figured out their systems and how it works. 4, 5, I believe, they figured it out with release time. Um, and I think that's where you need that extra teaching assistant. In the older. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm sorry? sorry. It was my understanding that the TA from the special ed, or ICT class, I'll say, Go. Yeah. On top of the so there's two TAs in there. Right. Two With TAs the and the teacher. Yeah. Yes. And right now the teacher, um, the science STEM teacher, is collaborating with special ed teachers mm -hmm. to modify the curriculum for those students in one school. In another school, the teacher is dual certified. And in the third school, 
they figured that out. You know, they were meeting without anybody saying, hey guys, you should do this. So, I was just curious. Yeah, no, I, I totally understand your question. I think the biggest concern will be the four or five building, right? Because K one's fun; it's all hands yeah, on yeah. kind of thing. Two, three still kind of fun, but when they go from two to three, it gets a little yeah. bit more difficult. But they figured it out. I actually spoke to my special ed teachers and asked them what they needed. They're like, "No, we've already done it." Okay. And I was actually there today, first thing in the morning, and you watched um, Kathy and my two special ed self-contained teachers. They were planning for the first half hour of school. So I think they've got it figured out. I think we need to talk more and delve deeper into the four or five. Sounds good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I have two questions. Yes. Um, so the TAs, is that a true, I'm confused, is it a true increase or is it an increase on this line item and we're going to see a decrease somewhere else further yes. in the budget? That's what you'll see. Okay. So, so they, they were... were well, I can't answer that because I don't do that chart, okay. but I'm sure, that, I'm sure that guy over there could. Um, because when I went through it, I, when he was giving me numbers, I'm like, they're not accurate in any case. So he went back through and we went person by person by person and um, he reassessed where things would go. So there's a decrease, I believe, in the gen ed side and an increase in the SPED side. When we get there, Enrique, can you point that out for us? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was one question. And the other one is, how many nurses do we have now, and how mm -hmm. many are we budgeting for next year? We have five in our general budget. Okay. Okay, but in our, my BOCES line, that line there in the SPED budget, we're adding an LPN and a nurse, an RN. Would, have we considered bringing them in-house and just hiring them in as head head employees? Would that be less expensive? I would have to defer to Enrique, but I'm going to probably say no because they got a huge raise last year. So. Um, and the aid on it. Let's say let's say that we are correct on one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That's what we budget for the RN and and LN. We get let's say thirty percent to make it simple, thirty three percent back from bonuses. Our total cost is a hundred thousand. I think that the nurse to the <coughs> benefits on everything will add to one thirty to one forty. So and it would be only one. So we're going to see if next year it's a lot more than one fifty, then we can bring it back to you guys and say, Well, instead of being one fifty it was two fifty then maybe at that point it made sense. But with the estimate of 150, <coughs> definitely um, it's not worth having that we're on the Thank you. I have, I have a follow-on question to yes. that. Is there, a, is there an additional expense to the contractor outside of this amount paid to BOCES? So with some of the nurses we have today, we pay BOCES a dollar amount, we pay a third party some delta, whatever yeah. that range is. So yes, so let me ask that question, answer that question. So we have a one-to-one -one nurse for a student that moved in two years ago, rides the bus to and from home, um, and is a, and a BOCES student. So that nurse gets an extra $5 an hour that we have to pay, because to keep that nurse, um, there's a BOCES, BOCES finally set their rate, so it was appropriate, so BOCES rate was down here. And at that point, nurses were making up here, right? So we had to figure out that happy medium. And we would negotiate, we'd do the best we could. So there's two agencies we use. One is Pearl Care, the other is um, Maxis, I think, Maxim, something like that. So whatever gets, whoever gets the best price, then they have to sign a side contract with Joe that we would pay this and we have this. So it's about $5 for the nurse um, extra pay that we would pay $5 an hour. So so it's only gonna be $5 an hour more per per nurse on top of this BOCES line Correct. item? This BOCES line item already accounts for that? It already accounts. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. We're hiring the show for for next year? Yes. So what are we doing this year? This year I'm paying um, out of my budget for transportation. So they, when our students go out, they, I think you don't have a chauffeur, they pull the custodians that are bus drivers like we were going on a field trip. Just like if anybody went out on a field trip. So now if we added our own chauffeur, they can be doing multiple bus things during the day with, with students across the district. And the chauffeurs wow, are, are paid on an hourly rate, so if she only needs it for three hours, it's, well, cheaper. it's, it's much cheaper. So what we'll do in September, we'll make September, October, November, 
um, everybody will make their calendar. We'll give that and then we'll start again, December, January, February, do a three month calendar. That way they know when we need them. The only, the only question I had that I wrote down was the sale six program. Mm -hmm. I don't, I, I don't know if I, I know what that is. Oh, I feel like maybe I should know what that is, but I don't know if I do. It's this, it's just the net, it's the final level. Kids are 17 or 18 when they go upstairs. It's an, oh, we call it upstairs, because they're upstairs and downstairs. So it's a 12 one once. We make it a little bit bigger because we have to get them used to, because they'll be there until they're 21. So we have it at the, we're going to put it at the middle school. We already we have, that's ABC. So we have sale six. Oh, sale six. six. I'm sorry, sale I did six. sailor. Sale six is a 12 one one class. So those were the kids that transitioned from fifth grade to sixth grade that had big discrepancies and we didn't have the right program for them. So we created the sale six program. We're gonna roll that up to seven. Roll it, so it'll be a six, seven, but the schedule will look different. Okay. Okay. New position. Yes. On the district yeah. page. Do you wanna talk about that? Oh, the mental health? Yeah, we can. So um, we added, I call it a mental health clinic. So where I came from upstate, we have mental health and we have doctors and dentists in our schools. So they would rotate buildings and we wouldn't have to send kids to doctors and dentists. There's no more excuses to this school, right? So Joe and I got approached last spring from um, Student Assistance Council Association to come and talk about this grant. So we said, sure, great, wonderful, we'll do it. So we get we find out in June or July that we had um, been accepted. It's a one year grant, which we're hoping it'll continue. And we're partnering with Bedford. So Bedford has three days and we have two days. Um, Karen started yesterday. We have 12 slots for any of our students. It's more like an out of district. So referral. So it's like a referral if we were to make it to a hospital or to a counseling <coughs> center. So Karen can see kids throughout the school day. She can meet with parents. Her hours are from 8.30 to 4.30. Um, there's a whole referral process that we would follow on the inside of our school. So we would, we would have the parents reach out. Here's our referral to them. Then once we got everything done, we really don't set her up with kids. The Student Assistance Council does. What we did find out on Tuesday <laughs> is that Karen can only see 13 and older students. We were all, I said to Joe, I don't remember this in our grant. So I called Ellen today again, and I finally got Beverly, who's another person I talked to, and she said, well, we're only adolescents. I said, adolescence is like 11 and up. She goes, but we're only approved for 13 and up. So what I said to her is, I need you to go back to the state and see if you can be approved to work in two buildings, one day in the middle school, one day in the high school. I said, because this woman can stay till 4.30. There's hours outside of the school. If parents can't make it in, they can come and see her. And I said, I can't have a high school kid somehow get to the middle school. So she was supposed to get back to me today. I didn't hear from her, so don't worry. We'll follow up tomorrow. But she also has, which I think is the biggest thing for our district, is access to a psychiatric person. So a psychiatrist will also consult with the family and the student, because a lot of our kids can't get the psychiatric need they need, the psychiatric help they need. So we have been having to find people. Um, and having this program aligned with that has been fabulous. So if we would have known that she could only see 13 and older students, it's some of our eighth graders, but it's mostly our high school, we would have just placed her in the high school. That being said, I'm hoping tomorrow, Beverly can give me some good news and then I work with Anthony and find a space for her, um, which will be really good news for us. And it's a great resource to the district, so um, families don't have to try to find someone to get into, because that's our biggest problem right now. Will, will virtual be an option uh, for the parents that can't get there during the day but want to participate in the offering? I definitely know the psychiatrist is virtual. I don't know if Karen is virtual. They make their own rules. We basically house them. They can't use our phones. They can't use our um, laptops or anything. She can't have our email. So because it's the Office of Mental Health, they have strict guidelines. Thank you. Yep. Thank you.